Hello folks, this is Mr. Dan coming to you from the Landscape Design Classroom and today I'm going to be talking to you about the place of humans and ecosystems. So what's the main idea here? What is the role of human populations in the world's ecosystems? Um, as you can see on the chart on the right, uh, these are populations based off of the year 2014 with about a billion people in China and India alone with the uh, United States coming in steeply underneath that at third and about 318 million people. Um, I think our population is probably in the I don't know, 330s, 340s at this point, but there is a lot of people in the world currently, about seven or eight billion people, maybe even more than that. So uh, the relationship with nature and our environment, oh, is very complex, wide difference of opinion. We definitely see that these days. Uh, centered around possible harm to the environment and public policy protections. Some definitions to remember here, uh, environment, which is our surroundings, including material and spiritual influences affecting the growth and development of living beings. Ecosystem, a network of living and non-living organisms in which each organism is affected by the other organism in the network. So, moving on to some more definitions, biotic, uh, we've talked about this at length here at this point, uh, which is living things such as microscopic organisms, plants, animals, and humans. Abiotic, non-living things such as soil, temperature, climate, and sunlight. And the two types of life forms in the biotic community. So you have producers, which are which plants able to capture solar energy from the sun to grow and produce food for consumers. So your producers here are going to be the trees and the grass. And we have consumers, living organisms that cannot produce food and must depend on producer plants. So our uh, consumers in the picture would be we as humans and cows. The classes of consumers, herbivores, which are plant eaters, carnivores, which are meat eaters, omnivores, which eat both. And we would consider ourselves to be omnivores for the most part, for the most part, unless you really don't like vegetables like me. Uh, so I mainly uh, try to just do more of a carnivore. So human change by ecosystems, managing wildlife, plants, and animals, domesticating animals for many purposes, including uh, for food, and human changes to the ecosystem, developing new plants as crops to feed themselves and domesticated animals, reshaping the earth, earth moving dams, energy production. And the impact of that uh, may be negative, may provide benefits to humans, may conserve ecosystems and natural resources for future generations. Uh, it's really up to us how, uh, what our impact is gonna be. Because if we're, you know, if we're continually taking, then we're, and not putting back, then we're not gonna have anything for future generations. So if we're using stuff up, we need to replace it. So preservers, conservers, and users. Uh, managing natural resources as a preserver, conserver, or user. Oh, three ways of looking at natural resource management, viewpoints included in many policy debates. So let's take a look at the preserver viewpoint. Let's leave nature as intact as, impo as possible. The values here, are more value to beauty and wildlife habitat, but less value to economics. So if you leave everything as it is and never use it, then there's no profit to be gained from it. But if you leave it like it is, then you're gonna be able to uh, keep that beauty and integrity of that area and also provide a habitat for wildlife. So the user viewpoint, natural resources are a source of wealth and power. Some of the values here, more value in taking and using nature for maximum economic value, but less value in creatures in the ecosystem. So while we domesticate, uh, we definitely wanna leave some of those areas in the ecosystem for animals to thrive. So, a conservative viewpoint here, natural resources should benefit humans, but should be used carefully. Uh, the values here, maintaining ecosystems, saving resources for the future, and sustaining, conserving, and protecting. So I'm kind of more of the conserver standpoint. Um, I believe we need to use what we can, or what we need, but we need to uh, also puts the herb to give back and allow for future generations to use that area. So which one's right? Difficult to determine right or wrong. 
growing world population and increased environmental pressure. Pressure using resources can prevent human hunger and suffering, but resources will also be needed for the future. So the right type of planning um, and conserver standpoint is where I, where I believe to be the uh, right type of use. So good management requirements, scientific knowledge, human effort, an emphasis on renewable resources, and a way to save scarce resources. So I can't stress enough that if you're going to use something, you should definitely replace it over time. So, because we need to be able to continue using resources and replacing them for future generations moving on and on. So, that's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, you can give me a call down here in the Landscape Design Classroom. And I appreciate your time, folks. Have a great day.